By the ancients, would you look at that? Science officer Talorn exclaimed as the survey images came in. He and Captain Zolda stared in wonder at the small blue planet displayed on the view screen of their scouting ship, the IMS Seeker. Is that, are they intentionally altering their own genetic structure? Zolda gasped. The images clearly showed bipedal creatures conducting advanced genetic procedures on themselves and other life forms from their home planet. Complex DNA helixes were spliced and fused, augmented with biomachinery that was clearly not natural evolution. These humans were consciously and rapidly evolving themselves in ways never before seen in the galaxy. How is this possible? Talaren murmured. We've never encountered a pre-space flight civilization engaging in advanced gene editing. This species must only be a few hundred years into scientific advancement, yet they show sophistication far beyond what we'd expect. They might be uplifted, Zolda contemplated. See if you can spot any artifacts from any older spacefaring races. Larn expertly maneuvered the scout ship's array of sensors across the planet, probing and scanning. Preliminary scans show no evidence of precursor relics or materials that shouldn't occur naturally on this planet, Captain. As impossible as it seems, I do believe the humans achieved this on their own. Astonished, they continued gathering as much data as they could. The humans had gene modded themselves for enhanced intelligence, longevity, disease resistance, and were developing specialized genotypes for space travel, computation, and cognition. There were even attempts to add photosynthesis pathways from native plants into the human genome, with partial success so far. Alongside the gene editing, the humans were rapidly advancing robotics, nanotechnology, quantum computing, and other disciplines. Integrating these seamlessly with the biological modifications to improve physical and mental performance, it was a civilization-wide initiative advancing on multiple fronts simultaneously. Several hours later, the IMS seeker departed Earth's orbit and set a course for the nearest Galactic Council planet. This discovery would shock the entire galaxy. Making first contact. The council chambers buzzed with incredulous chatter as Zolda and Delarn presented their phenomenal findings. All manner of bipedal and quadrupedal aliens from over a dozen worlds listened, clicked, hummed, and gestured excitedly as hollow images of the genetically enhancing humans floated above the central dais. Simply astounding, Counselor Marin, an aged Cadisi scholar, administrator whispered, his flanking prehensile ears tilted sharply forward. Are we certain this is accurate and unadulterated data? Absolutely, Counselor. Captain Zolda asserted, we quadruple checked the telemetry. The humans are intentionally rewriting their genome in ways we've never conceived. They are uplifting themselves, rapidly gaining knowledge and ability. Preposterous, barked Counselor Klaxwug, an imposing warrior case crawl. Mere primates cannot possibly grasp advanced genealogy. This is obviously the work of an elder race interfering with natural evolution. His remarks sparked a wave of dissent among the council. Talorn activated more hollows showing the planet-wide initiatives. Please observe, we detected no traces of interference or anomalous precursor artifacts. The working hypothesis is that the humans unlocked early genetic and embryonic manipulation tech, which then recursively boosted their cognition and technical skills over multiple generations enabling rapid development. The chamber fell silent at that. Self-guided, intentional uplift of an entire species was the stuff of fiction and wild theory. And yet here was possible evidence now, confronting the Galactic Council. If true, this changes everything. Counselor In spoke slowly. We always assumed natural limits on how fast primitive cultures could progress. But if one species can guide its own evolution, he let the statement hang. The implications were profound. With conscious control of their genetic and cognitive growth, there was no telling how fast the humans might advance or what heights they might reach. The council had much to ponder. Later, smaller working groups convened to analyze the data and decide recommendations. The key question, should they make first contact now, while humanity was still pre-stellar but developing extremely fast, or wait and observe at a distance? Making first contact, part two. Two months after initial discovery, the IMS seeker hung at the outskirts of the Sol system, maintaining covert observation of human activity. The ship's perfect optical cloaking kept it hidden, but allowed an unimpeded view. Captain Zolda and science officer Larn kept a daily log of the rapid changes happening on Earth. 
The monitored transmissions and infosphere data revealed just how profoundly the genetic self-uplift was accelerating human knowledge acquisition. Entire disciplines advanced generations in just a few years' time. Breakthroughs in biotech, computronics, nanosystems, all fueled by the recursive improvement of the human mind and body via custom gene edits. They observed spaceflight capability fast approaching. Initial slow ships would quickly give way to sophisticated designs as the genetically enhanced humans poured their sharpened intellects into the challenge. It would not be long before the soul system saw traffic and outposts throughout its domains. At this pace, they will surpass our entire civilization's progress, level within the next 30 to 50 years, Talorin remarked one day, especially if they engage in longevity treatments to give their top researchers extended working lifespans. Zolda gave a slow whistle of awe. You really think they can exceed our tech levels that fast? A large gesture to the monitor showing DNA helix schematics and splice genome samples. Just imagine what you could accomplish, Captain, if you tacked on a few more centuries of sharp mental productivity. I fear our council deethers while this human flood tide surges exponentially. Troubled, Zolda observed the thriving blue world and its dazzling networks of sparkling city clusters. Talarn was right. Humanity advanced so fast it became difficult for his cruel mind to truly fathom. How would galactic society handle this? Three days later, the Council Directive arrived. The encoded burst transmitted from across the light years in an instant. Zolda read it twice to be sure of the orders. Yes, the Council wanted the IMS seeker to break concealment and initiate first contact protocols immediately. No use waiting, they said. Earth must be welcomed now before the surging humans took any missteps. Stand by to welcome their delegates at the next council session. Drawing a deep breath, Zolda gave the orders. The centuries-long doctrine of remote observation, without interference, just evaporated. Helm, set intercept course for the human's prime orbital station. Let us say hello. First delegation. The council hall buzzed loudly as delegates and functionaries assembled for the special session. News spread rapidly about the invited human delegation. Speculation ran rampant about their abilities and appearance. Wild theories abounded. The doors parted and a squad of Kroll guardsmen marched in coordination around a central group of 25 humans, then stood to attention facing the counselor's tier dais. A ripple of surprise passed through the chamber. The newly contacted humans bore little resemblance to their original survey images. These specimens were taller, hairless, with enlarged craniums. Dark eyes with a disturbing multi-level depth gazed intelligently about missing nothing. The senior diplomat stepped forward. Receptive translation implants nestled in his ears. Greetings and salutations to the Galactic Council from the Human Union. He began in a clear, firm voice. We are pleased to establish formal relations with your Association of Worlds at this stage in our development. There were stun looks between counselors. At this stage, the statement implied so much about their abrupt emergence and intent. Counselor Marin rose slowly, manipulating the anti-grav controls of his mobility chair to elevate up and forward over the intricately carved stone desk. He addressed the tall, modified human. Likewise, we greet you and welcome the human union into the fabric of the Galactic Council. Please, if you would be so kind, enlighten this body as to the nature and goals of your shall we say, enhanced species, and how we might build mutual understanding. The lead diplomat gave Marie an evaluative stare, then replied, The human goal is continual growth, counselor. For 10,000 years since unlocking rudimentary gene tech, we have sought rapid advancement on all fronts, mental, physical, cultural. Now as we reach for the stars, guided self-evolution allows expansion in numerous directions. We seek partners who understand the transcendent possibilities. He paused, judging the effect of his words. The human union desires nothing save open trade, participation and exchange of discoveries that propel all parties to greater destinies. The sincerity seemed evident, yet Mirren caught shadowed thoughts rippling behind those dark multifaceted eyes. Perhaps negotiation of boundaries and protocols might be advisable. But for now, welcoming humanity held sway as other species introduced themselves and polite discourse began. The astonishing humans had arrived, ready or not. 